Okay, so this is exactly where we left off um, last time. So let's just continue with that texture. Okay, I mean, if you, if you if you haven't seen the first part, I'll just you know encourage you to go and see the first part because obviously this is the continuation of the first part part of this uh, stylized fire. So let's just continue. Um, so I'm gonna run this through warp and try to distort it even further. I'm gonna use uh, cells. Actually, not this cell cells for with a much less scale. I'm gonna apply some blur to it, mainly because we are using warp and warp operates um, best with the soft shapes. And now I'm just gonna scale this intensity back down. So as you can see, I want just a little bit distortion and I want those sharp angles as well. So um, I can now go back to the, the warp and just, you know, just add a little bit so as you can see we kind of getting those uh, sharp edges now and uh, maybe a little bit too sharp so let's increase the intensity of the blur and i think the scale might be a little bit too much as well okay so I, you know i want this distortion happening every now and then but i don't want it uh, there to be too much of it Okay, so this is basically our new master node. And from this one, we can run it through bevel. Uh, do maybe something like this. And then through threshold. And we can just duplicate this one again, have it here. All right, so this one we're gonna run through blend and it needs to go to the first one that will go to the second one and we need another blend here and that one go to the first one and the last one will go uh, to the second input so now what we could do for example we can go to this blend set the opacity to something like 0.6 go back to this threshold as you can see here we kind of getting this uh, temperature changes uh, on our texture okay same with this bit we can just put the opacity to 0.6 go to threshold and scale it even further although it doesn't seem like it's working it does but you have to double click on, on the blend node and now going back to threshold and just you know changing this temperature uh, value even further Okay, so let's preview how it, I look with the color. Obviously, there'll be a bunch of stuff that we're gonna add to it, but let's just add a bit more color to it so we can, you know, preview it how it looks. Okay, so that would be the red color and it would be at the end. And in here, let's just make something a lot more brighter. Like a yellow. I'm gonna change it from linear to smooth and just apply a lot more smoothness to it okay now we can go back to blend change this value so we can get um, this yellow back a bit and now I'm just gonna run it through glow I'm gonna pick a uh, reddish color or maybe orangey And basically manipulate those manipulate those sliders to get um, some sort of uh, glow there. Um, before I plug this in, I probably want to blur it a little bit to get rid of the uh, some of the hard parts of this texture. But I want to blur it just a, just a little bit, like literally 0.1. Uh, maybe 0.3. Okay, so now let's try to fix some of the shapes because I think they are too simplistic, especially the ones that uh, control our uh, temperature, uh, like those two. It's a little bit more cleanup. Right, so let's start with uh, this one. Uh, I want to try a couple things. First, I'm going to try to warp it through Perlin maybe to see if that could work. 
Uh, obviously the scale of the pedal and noise is just way too much, so I just want a, a little bit of scale. And now the intensity. And I probably want to warp it again with, uh, with those hard um, edges texture as well. So, um, warp. And lower the intensity. And that will be our second texture. As you can see, we're kind of getting a lot better shapes than we uh, used to have here, because this was like a straight edge and now it's actually um, a little bit more um, warped. We can always go back to parallel noise and just, you know, increase the size of uh, parallel noise. As you can see, we're kind of getting some nice shapes there. Uh, so we could do exactly the same thing for our uh, white parts on the temperature. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy paste and duplicate this here, plug that one in here and into the final blend. So we're getting essentially this. Okay, there are a couple more things I want to try. So let's maybe try to run it through slope blur with the shape of the circle, the soft circle. I'm going to increase the sample so I could get like a nice um, blur. But I think before plugging this in there, I'm just going to scale it down without the tiling okay so go to the tiling mode absolute and no tiling and plug it in here so we get this nice blur and now we can blend it with our original texture mm, by setting this to maybe max yeah probably to max Now we can go back here and manipulate this uh, value, so we get a little bit more uh, data here, just a, a little blur. And now obviously the glow is probably way too much that we want, so I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. Okay, maybe even we can run this through transform and scale it a little bit down. What we could do as well, we could just, yeah, remap those like that. And then we can, we have the slider here to manipulate how much actually we want of this texture um, to be present. And maybe as a final node, I'm just going to use uh, this technique of warp. Copy paste it here, plug our final texture there, and run it like this. And now we can just, you know, manipulate how much distortion we want. Uh, maybe I can even scale it way back down to something like two or three. I think three is a good uh, number for this. And we're kind of getting distortion just a little bit just to add a little bit more detail to that texture. Okay, so that's what we have. And now we can go back way back to the tile sampler. And let's try to get something that looks a little bit better. So I can manipulate the Y value and then get a little bit different shape. I kind of like this, but it's, it seems like it's missing a little bit more data here and here. So let's try to pick a different position random value. Okay, kind of like this, and then the second tile sampler.
And I think this kind of cut out is a little bit problematic. So let me just go back to this one and manipulate this value maybe. Yep. Okay, I kind of like this. And let's maybe try to tweak this uh, scale. So as you can see, there is a bunch of slider we can use and basically make this work for us even the tiling, but obviously that's a way too much, unless you want a very detailed uh, texture, but I'll try to avoid that. And maybe try to get something like this. Obviously this is a problem now, uh, but I think by going to those two transform nodes and disabling tiling might help. Okay, doesn't seem like it does. So I'm just going to run transform node here and scale it a little bit down and disable tiling here. Yeah, and it seems like this is uh, working now. And I can go back and just, you know, try to manipulate the values that we create earlier on. specifically for that use, that we can, you know, tweak them later on and try to get something that we like. So as you can see, you can generate various textures, see, what, see if they work for whatever you're doing in the engine. And if not, you can, you know, go back and tweak them. Okay, so I'm just gonna end up with uh, maybe something like this, but I'm gonna scale down this texture. Okay, and that could be my fire basically. If you want a bit more yellow uh, temperature, you can always uh, go here to the threshold and just increase it. As you can see, it starts bleed bleeding into those areas. Okay, maybe you want a little bit more this white or less, and you can do the same thing, basically. Okay. So yeah, that's the technique I used. Now let's go to the, let's take this texture, let's go to Photoshop and let's see if we can, uh, you know, add a few more, few more stuff to it. Okay, so I've imported this into Photoshop. How I did it, basically, I click this button, which is copy to clipboard. Went to, went to Photoshop and just paste it. And now I can go back to uh, filters, gallery. That's how I usually, you know, if I want to try a couple things, then I usually go here and uh, see what I can uh, get here. So I, you, I really like this cutout filter. Uh, so these are the settings for seven and three. And obviously if you want more details, you can just change it here. Um, yeah, try to, you know, play with those sliders to see what you could get with those. And now obviously just duplicating the layer, Control J to duplicate it and go to filter, uh, maybe radial blur, zoom best and maybe some amount like uh, 40. Put it as a add linear, maybe a color, and no, probably add or even screen, and you get a you know a little bit more uh, blur here and uh, on the bottom as well. Plus, you probably want to go back and duplicate it again. Control J, and go to blur, maybe uh, Gaussian blur. To get even a little bit more 
of this glow. Okay, so basically this is most of the time how I go about creating stylized uh, texture. I think this could look really nice in the uh, in the engine. And what I did, I've imported this texture into the engine. Um, so basically this is exactly what we've created. And as you can see, I've got a bit more stylized texture here, uh, but I don't think this one worked as I want it. Um, and here I've got a uh, the one I've created originally, which is this one that you see actually playing here in the, uh, in the viewport. So I think it helps if you have some sort of uh, breaks in your uh, in your texture, like for example, somewhere in the middle and you've got a little bit more temperature, um, high temperature here as well. Okay, so I think to me this one looks um, the best, but let me just switch into the one that we've just made, which is this one. So you still get this, um, you know, stylized fire look. As you can see, but I think we are kind of missing the high temperature rising to the top. So I think it might be a better idea if you can play with your position random in substance and um, get a little more breaks in the middle and some temp high temperature at the top as well. So let me switch to the one I prefer, which is that one. As you can see, kind of the fire rises uh, with the high temperature. And I think this one looks a lot better than the than the one we've made. However, you know, we can always go back to the substance now. Uh, to here to this one and just see if we can uh, you know get this break in the middle maybe uh, by changing position random okay so I hope you enjoyed this part and in the last part we're just gonna look into those uh, random shapes sparks basically it's a very it'll be very short tutorial and uh, hopefully it's just gonna help you to generate those uh, you know, varied shapes of the sparks. Okay. All right. See you in the next one.